Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video of Python series, I'm going to talk about what are for loops in Python, why do we use for loops in Python and how we can use for loops. So I, I hope you are already watching all the previous tutorials of Python because eventually when we reach to a certain point, and we are about to solve you know any high order questions in python all these concepts are actually going to help you a lot in solving those questions so without any further delay let's move on i'll open the pycharm over here and will and i'll explain you the uh, you know the whole concept of all loops so let me go here as usual i'm going to create a python file and i'm going to name it as for loops.py so when we talk about for loops, what are for loops exactly, right? When we talk about for loops, for loops are nothing, but they are used for sequential traversal. When I say sequential travel, it means like, let's say, for example, you have a list, right? So let me create a list over here. Let's say LST01, right? And inside that list, let me place few items. Let's say Bhavna and then let me say Bedi and then let me say one. Uh, let me add few more uh, numbers to it and then let me add cloud fitness the channel name right so what exactly is this this is nothing but a list so whenever in any kind of code right there is a need to iterate over this list when i say iterate over the list i want to access each and every element sequentially i want to access bhavna first then i want to access Bedi, then i want to access one five seven eight and then cloud fitness without missing any of these items if i want to sequentially traverse this particular list in that case we use for loops so for loops can be used for the sequential traversal of a string tuple list or dictionary so anything that is iterable string is iterable tuple is iterable list is iterable set is iterable dictionary is iterable we have discussed all of this in our previous videos right we have seen what is a string how do we work around string what is a tuple how do we work around tuple and everything right so anything that is iterable you can go ahead and use for loop with that right so now when i say you can use for loop how do we use for loop for loop is very simple this is the syntax for let's say i in lst01 and colon so this is the exact syntax of your for loop no hard thing over here for is the keyword i i is the iterable item inside your list 01 so if you are i if you are traversing via list right if you are traverse uh, sorry if you are traversing through a list in that case that list 01 is the list and i is the each item present inside the list which has to be traversed sequentially so i you can name it as anything you can name it as j you can name it as anything right now this is just a reference uh, variable you can name it as anything so for the first case what will happen is the i will be bhavna then you know the i will be bedi then it will be one five seven eight and then cloud fitness right and then the moment i click on enter i can simply say print and inside print i can say i right and let me just run this so the moment i run this you can actually see the output window what it has done it has traversed through uh you know this whole uh array right uh, uh, array or the list right it has traversed through this whole list and then it has printed each and every element from that particular list so this is how we can use for loop so if we have a logic to put in here right then in that case we can traverse through this for loop and then let's say everything is a number over here for example and then you want to add anything to that number right and create a new list out of it so that is kind of a um, uh, use case i'm just giving you an example where you can go ahead iterate through each and every element of the list add five to it and then print up uh, and then print a new list right so these are few uh, use cases as well this is one of the few uh, few use cases and like that there can be n number of use cases i've just given you an example now similar to the list right let me print it over here right similar to this first list uh, let me comment the first part over here 
you can have a tuple as well so uh, in case you have been watching my previous videos you already know that this is a tuple now i'm not going to discuss it in detail if you have any issues go watch the tuple video so this is a tuple now so for a tuple again right i can actually simply say for i in lst01 this is just a variable name it can be anything right if i run it again now again you see what it does is it simply traverses through the whole tuple right so this is how you can actually you know traverse through a list as well as a tuple now there is another question on how we can let, let me comment this so let's say you have a list and inside a list each element is its is itself a list that part also we have already discussed in our previous videos so how do we iterate over that so let's say I create a list over here, right? I have this LST02. This is my list, for example, right? It has each element of this list is nothing but it is a list in itself, right? Bhavna Bedi comes inside a list. Rahul Dixit comes inside a list. Anna Belly comes inside a list, right? So everything is a list in itself, right? Now, in this case, essentially, if I try to do the same thing, if I try to use the same for loop, which I have been using at the top, if I simply say, for i in lst02 because the name in fact let me keep it as 01 itself the name print i now what is going to happen each element here is nothing but it is a list so it is going to print each and every element right it is directly going to print the element which is nothing but it is a list in itself right so this is how uh, you know when you iterate through a list this is how you get the output and if you have watched my previous video you already know this now in case let's say i want both the elements now how do i do that so i have a name and surname right what i can do is if you see here let me comment out the first part right so for i i can simply say for i comma j in lst01 print i comma j now if i do that and let me run this output the way you will see the data is this now it is no more a list right it is just getting your surname and your name and the surname right now how did it happen so in list 01 what it does is it goes to each and every element now inside that each and every element it tries to find i and j combination so i combination it tries to find i and j i is bhavna and j is vedi so this is how exactly it works now this i and j again these are just the names you can keep it any you can give it any name so let's say i can say name and instead of j let me put it as surname right now similarly i can say print name comma surname right then essentially it is going to give you the same thing also to look at a little more better you can say let me say the name is right and let me put it over here the surname is this right in this case now if i run it you can actually see it will say the name is bhavna the surname is bedi the name is rahul the surname is dikshit so this is how you can actually go ahead and iterate when a list is present inside a list right now let me tell you one more thing is let's say you have this list 01 right let's say you have this list 01 now in this case uh you know uh, now i'm going to tell you how you can actually use for loops in a dictionary right now for a dictionary it is a list already if you watch my previous video i have already shown you a number of times how you can convert a list to a dictionary right you can directly convert a list to a dictionary let's say dict01 using dict constructor so now let me simply say dict lst01 right now moment i do that and i try to print my dict01 let's see what does what happens right now let me run this so if you see what happened is my dictionary got printed because using this dict keyword what i can do using this inbuilt dict function what i can do is i can pass in my list over here i can convert it into a dictionary and this is something that we have already discussed in our previous videos so we have a dictionary over here now if i want to iterate over dictionary this thing also i have explained in all my previous videos on dictionary you can simply use dict.items right what does dict.items do let us print it again right now the moment i print it what it will do it will list all the items which are present inside the list uh, present inside the dictionary these are the items which are present inside the dictionary right however if i try to use for i in dict 01 and if i say 
print i over here now you will see that it is not going to print your whole items it is only going to give you the key values of the dictionary so remember that if you use for loop directly in a dictionary it is always going to give you the key value so here the key value is bhavna then rahul and then anna so in a dictionary the first value is called a key and the corresponding value is called the value right so when you uh initiate a for loop in a dictionary like this it is always going to print i i is nothing but the keys of the dictionary if you need a situation like that in that case it's good but otherwise in case you need you know both the values then in that case you are going to use dict 01 dot items because in this case you are traversing over this output from dict dot items so that is why i showed you dict dot items because this is the output from dict dot items which got which gets traversed and then what you can say you can simply say i comma j because you need both you need key as well as value so i comma k i comma j anything so let me print uh, let me comment all these parts over here right and let me simply run only these statements right so moment i run this you, you can actually see that from a dictionary also you got this output you can actually fetch these item values from the dictionary as well right so i hope you like this video for the for loops and do practice it on your own so that you know it is very easy for you to understand and implement and when you do that you might face few errors by yourself which will be very helpful as you move forward because you are going to understand errors and solve it on your own right so thank you so much for being till here